Well, and that's part of their calculation, isn't it? That is part of their calculation. I mean, if they ramp rates hugely, if they ramp rates hugely, then they will inevitably cause a very sharp downturn with a recession and with falling inflation. But, I mean, the social cost of that, the political cost of that, uh, the human cost of that is, is, is frankly just is just too great to bear. I mean, you know, you'd be potentially, if they did that, looking at... Hello and welcome to this week in review with Nigel Farage. Nigel, I wanted to chat about whether central banks really will be able to raise interest rates as much as they're claiming they are going to do. And if they do, what are the implications of that? So let's start with the first half. Do you expect central banks, and let's take first of all more of a global position on this. Do you think central banks more broadly will be able to raise interest rates as much as they're saying they will and as much as markets are anticipating they will? Well, the main job of central banks in the modern world is to deal with government inflation targets. That's really their primary job. It has been over the last 10, maybe even up to 20 years. Um, and so we now have inflation across the Western world, which none of the central banks foresaw. I mean, none of them foresaw it. Then when it started to happen, they said, don't worry, your poor little heads. Then they said it's going to be tra transitory. And now they're going, ah, we've got this wrong. So if we threaten to ramp interest rates up a long, long way, that will dampen down some of the inflationary pressures within the economy. I, mean, that, I think that's exactly where we are right at this moment. But no, and I think you and I have discussed this before, the level of government indebtedness, the level of corporate indebtedness, the level of personal indebtedness, uh, which is far bigger than 2008, when we had the credit crunch and all the problems that came from that, suggests to me that whilst interest rates will go up, they won't go up massively. Um, and I think even here in the UK, there are one or two commentators beginning to understand that in some ways, inflation is Rishi Sunak's friend because we've borrowed so much money over the course of the last few years that only with that disease of inflation does the real cost of that total debt go down. So interest rates will be going up. Yes, uh, stock markets are obviously nervous about that and about some of the things central banks are saying, but they're not going to go up enough to stop inflation because it would literally bust everybody. It's as if you can see my notes that I've made here on my screen. I've, uh, <laughs> it's, it's almost exactly what, what, my, uh, what my preparation was. Let's quickly turn to whether the type of inflation that we're seeing, which is this Russian gas story, energy prices, supply chain problems, Aren't interest rates the wrong tool in order to solve those problems? Well, they're a crude tool, aren't they? They're a very, very crude tool. I mean, it depends what you think is really causing inflation. Uh, I mean, you know, one is commodity prices rising, uh, partly as a result of what's happening in, U in Ukraine and fear of what could happen. I mean, after all, it's just this week that Putin's turned off the taps to Poland, turned off the taps to Bulgaria. Um, and he hasn't turned the taps off to Germany because he doesn't view Germany as a hostile state. So they're still paying in euros, not rubles. Well, of course, they're very friendly, aren't they? Because, hey, we're Germany. We're going to give you a load of armoured tanks that have got these incredible anti-aircraft firepower. So we're doing our bit to support the West, just that they didn't supply any ammunition. <laughs> I mean, it is quite astonishing. Um, you know, Russia have got Germany with a short and curl is. Uh, the Russians know it. Germany knows it. Um, but if this did get ugly, I mean, can you imagine if you turn the taps off on Germany? Just what that would mean for prices and everything else and for German industry, uh, let alone Angela Merkel's legacy. So, so that's one kind of inflation that is there and is happening. But the other kind of inflation and this is probably very unfashionable uh, because, you know, modern monetary theory and all the baloney we've heard over the last few years. The other kind of inflation is the kind of inflation caused by governments. And it's the Milton Friedman, Enoch Powell, and we're going back to the late 1950s and through to Thatcherism and Reaganism. It's monetarism. Um, and we learned through that that massive increase, it's quite simple actually. Massive increases in the money supply 
mean you have more money chasing the same number of goods and services. And guess what happens? Prices go up and you get shortages of labor and shortages of goods. I mean, you know, anyone that denies that this is part of what's going on here uh, is just not hooked up or linked to the real world. So actually, uh, what government ought to be doing um, is to stop excessive borrowing, is to stop massive money supply creation. But they seem to be hooked on it like it's a complete drug. I mean, you know, when you think about quantitative easing, Osborne introduced that. It was supposed to last for a couple of years. It's been with us for a decade. Uh, so these are all examples, um, you know, of governments hooked on debt, governments hooked on increasing money supply, that leading to inflation. It's why, you know, I mean, I, I feel very strongly, and I think you do too, uh, by the way, 12% inflation in the Netherlands, 12% in the Netherlands. And I think that's why we feel this inflationary period is here for a lot longer than anybody in mainstream media, central banks or government would ever, ever tell you. One of the data points which suggests what you're what you're saying there is that the, the inflation rates are very high in the US, which is not as much hit by the, the Russian story and, yes. and the Ukraine story. So that there is uh, some, some academic research on this as well, suggesting that it's about fiscal and monetary stimulus. But I think that debate's still very much raging. As for the uh, the German tanks, and I'm, I'm originally German, so uh, I just want to point out that the Germans have upgraded their tanks from using broomsticks uh, as gun turrets to, to real tanks. And you know, when Zelensky said he doesn't need a ride, he needs ammunition, well, the Germans have provided the ride in, in the form of the tanks without the ammunition. It's but let's turn to... It's worth remembering, actually, just on the point of the German military, um, who the defence minister was in Germany under Angela Merkel, the utterly completely, totally useless Ursula von der Leyen, and she's now in charge of the European Union. You could, I mean, you just couldn't make this stuff up, could you? Well, I think she was quite useful to the, to the consultants that she hired during her time at the, uh, uh, at the uh, ministry. In a similar way to, to Christine Lagarde, the, the head of the ECB, was very useful during her time as French finance minister. But we won't go there. What I want to ask you next is whether central banks will trigger a recession as they raise interest rates. Well, and that's part of their calculation, isn't it? That is part of their calculation. I mean, if they ramp rates hugely, if they ramp rates hugely, then they will inevitably cause a very sharp downturn with a recession and with falling inflation. But, I mean, the social cost of that, the political cost of that, uh, the human cost of that, it is, is frankly just is just too great to bear. I mean, you know, you'd be potentially, if they did that, looking at a 1930s type scenario. And that's it, another it reason seemed... why, going back to the start of our conversation, <clears throat> they are not going to ramp rates anything like as high as people right now would have you believe. It seems like the worst of both worlds or of every world because you've got you've got inflation out of control in order to bring inflation back down there again they're going to raise interest rates which is going to cause a recession but they're not going to be able to raise interest rates anywhere near inflation in order to do that which means savers are going to be you know i'm sure there's people at home thinking great we're finally going to get some interest in our savings that's not what's going to happen is it uh, not in real terms no and even if rates do go up you know and if you're earning three percent or three and a half percent but inflation's at nine percent well it's not a great place to be is it and that's the one thing i guess that is the one historic lesson from the 1970s is there were a lot of people people who'd lived then through two world wars who'd seen a lot of bad times who'd been very very cautious and very prudent they put their money away it was in the post office it was in premium bonds it was in interest-bearing accounts at the banks, and that was where they felt safe and solid with their money. And huge numbers of people who started at the 1970s being relatively comfortably off, who finished the 1970s with almost nothing. Um, and, and, and that, I guess, is the big, big lesson, that if you're in cash, if you're, if you're in interest-bearing cash during inflation, given the strictures on interest rates that we've discussed today, you have to think about di diversification of that portfolio. Otherwise, your money is going to erode in the most horrendous way. And we're not expecting that to change as a result of the Bank of England's interest rate hikes. Nigel, thanks for, for joining us. And to everyone at home, thanks for watching. Thank you.